It's an insane game. It's just almost indescribable at times. You feel every single emotion that there possibly is, you know, to feel. And it's something that the, the more and more I do it, the more and more um, I'm becoming accustomed to it. And I, I truly think like this is just my calling, you know, I'm in the place where I'm supposed to be. I got a great opportunity now to fight uh, a UFC eight fight veteran in Cowboys Dance Hall where I started my pro career. I've just kind of been waiting for this moment. This moment almost feels like this is like my chance to, to finally break out and, and show the full performance uh, that I know I'm capable of and show that I definitely belong in, in the UFC. Again, we're scheduled to fight in March. So, coming off of this fight, uh, he only gained a couple more pounds, you know, from his from his fighting weight. So it was easy, easy cut. So, no damage. That's that's the reason. You know. Yeah. So I was supposed to fight in November, and then my opponent ended up pulling out during fight week. Um, and one of the replacements that was offered was this guy named Cameron Pressure. Fast forward maybe like two days after uh, Christmas, I get a call um, saying that this opportunity came up to fight Pressure um, again. And, you know, because I was in camp for my last fight, I knew that like I was in shape. I knew that I had built a ton of skills. Um, that you know, I was ready to, to kind of show it. It just made sense. It made sense to, to take the fight. All right, let's get things going here. Blue gloves for Borrego, red for pressure. Professor Joe Solis with the assignment. The fight went basically exactly how we expected. We knew that he had a strong clinch game. Um, we knew he was a big, strong guy um, and that he was gonna try to kind of just overpower me. So he tried to clinch a few times. I was able to break that clinch, land a few, uh, few body kicks, a few body shots off of that. Um, at the end of the first round, um, I was starting to see his, his hands kind of come down. Um, but in, in my corner in between rounds, uh, my pops, who's my you know, head coach, told me that we can start working the high kick. Cardio-wise, both guys still looking fresh. Here a minute into the second round. Oh, oh! oh that's a big kick. Um, and sure enough, man, it, you know, the next 30 seconds of the second round, I, I was able to kind of look low, go high with my kick, um, and then finish it off with my hands. Borrego! Wow! The Dragon makes a statement here at Fury FC 85! What a finish! Yeah, I mean, it felt good. It felt good to, to get back into the win call. You know, I think it needed I needed to be in, in his hometown and kind of have that that mindset of, of going in there and kind of just handling my business. Declaring your winner by knockout, Zach the Dragon Borrego. So, you know, as I was driving back, like I kind of had a feeling that because the fight had gone the way it did, I didn't really take no damage, um, that a short notice opportunity maybe for like late February, early March would, would come up. Um, but I didn't think that it would come up like a week later. Once we confirm, you know, the, the fight, basically a week later, uh, we, we got back into training. Um, we knew that we weren't gonna have much time to like add new skills or anything. So it was just kind of keeping everything sharp, letting my body recover as well. And uh, the opponent that we originally were gonna fight 
basically that opponent ended up pulling out. I go through two other opponents. We finally agreed on, on this person and he agreed too. So we knew that he was gonna be dangerous because anybody that takes a fight on seven days notice, you know, is, is someone that uh, you can't underestimate. Um, and I went in there and because I felt so comfortable and, and accustomed to kind of what was going on, I took the fight as it came to me. Um, he tried to roll into my legs a few times, do some awkward, weird stuff. Um, and my jab and, and me in the clinch was kind of able to, to help me set up my, my head kick. Yeah, you see the uh, creative style of striking, as we'll call it, Borrego. Oh, oh head kick, yeah, that's a wrap. That's it is done. The dragon, Zach Borrego. Too much for the Wolfman tonight. After the fight, I did call my shot uh, to Eric, which is the promoter of, of Fury and uh, told him that I had fought, you know, for him twice on short notice uh, and, and just got back to back wins in 14 days. So I wanted to be back in my own um, city and I wanted to, to headline the card. After every fight, man, I, I just get more motivated because um, I feel like I still haven't performed to my best of my abilities in the cage. You know, I know what I'm capable of doing. Um, I know the type of fighter that I am, but once you see how good you're doing and, and you still feel like you haven't performed to your best, you know, it, it motivates you even more to, to go out there for the next one. So on March 24th, um, I will get my hand raised. I think it's going to really push me um, to show that I'm not just some person that can beat regional guys, but a guy who can beat the best in the world. I think it gives me the right dance partner to, to showcase all of my skill set um, and show that I definitely belong in the UFC.